probably wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses inside. I don't know. So let me show you why you're here. Today, I'm going to show you and bring you along the journey of how we are gonna take this five cubic foot upright freezer and we are going to turn it into our fermentation chamber for our home brew beer that we make here in my small little studio apartment in Houston, Texas. So I will have everything that we have purchased, um, the heating pad, the Inkbird uh, temperature controller, everything will be provided below in the description. So check that out later. But we're gonna show you and take you along our journey on how to convert this bad boy right here into a in-home fermentation chamber that you can use right away. So sit back, relax, crack a cold brew, and let's do it. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. You're making money. Come on. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Man. What's through that door? So this is my heating element. The link to buy this is in the description below. I've provided a link uh, from Amazon. I think it's like 20 bucks. Um, not that bad. It also comes with uh, two uh, stick on uh, thermometers that um, will be able to read the uh, temperature in the ambient zone that you have created which is going to be in here so we're going to open this up and I will have this um, installed underneath here in just a second this is our Inkbird temperature controller I actually bought the Wi-Fi edition because I wanted to monitor <coughs> I wanted to monitor the temperature from my phone when I wasn't at home. Thought that would be pretty cool. You know what they say, buy once, cry once. Anyways, so real quick uh, fly through over this. Um, this will actually be plugged into the wall or a power strip. I'm gonna use a power strip to make sure if anything happens, it's gonna shut off and trip itself. This is where uh, you plug in the freezer into the cooling side right here. You will plug the freezer into that, and then you plug your heating side, which is our heating pad, into that. This guy will then, this is our temperature probe, our temp temperature element. This will be placed, um, eventually we're gonna buy um, a, Eventually, we're gonna buy a thermo well and have this stuck directly into the beer. But for now, we are going to put this right against the carboy and we'll, we'll tape it and we'll insulate it a little bit to keep the uh, temperature as accurate as possible. But this guy is gonna be giving us the reading and this guy is the brains of the operation. Homebrew, woo! It's homebrew. It's our New England IPA that we made. It's um, still working out the color, so it tastes good though. So we're gonna take our heating element and place it at the bottom of the freezer. Then the carboy should fit right on top. The pad is the perfect size for it. Uh, the airlock that's sitting in the bung will have plenty of room once you close the lid just like that. Boom, baby. 
Would you look at that? You just look at it. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah, there's a few more blemishes on the car. The oh car, my gosh, just car, look at the it. The car is not perfect. Just look at it. So I moved the freezer to its final spot in my apartment, and right now I'm working on a little cord management. These two cords are small enough that once you close the freezer lid, there will be just a tiny opening and it shouldn't affect your temperature that much. Here's a side view of the freezer. You can tell that the hole is very small where the cords are. And I went ahead and took a command hook to, to hang the control unit. Looking in, the temperature probe is taped with a paper towel and some blue painter's tape for now. Eventually we will get a thermo well and put it through the top. All right guys, we're gonna go over some basic temperature controls on your new Inkbird. To get started, press and hold the set button for about three seconds. This is gonna bring you to your temperature set point. For the beer we just brewed, we are going to adjust using the down arrow key to 60 degrees. Next, hit the set button again to bring you to your hot differential and cold differential states. So when the temperature goes three degrees above your set point, this will turn on the freezer. And then when the temperature goes three degrees below your set point, this will turn on the heating element. You can always go back in and change these values using the arrow keys to whatever you'd like. The rest of the settings on your Inkbird are for more advanced temperature control. We're not going to cover this in this video because this is for the basic setup and manipulation of your new controller. Make sure your cooling dial is set more toward the minimum side. This will help prevent overcooling and allow your system to heat and cool in a more gradual way. All right guys, so as you can see, this was a very simple and straightforward process. Um, very few moving pieces. The hardest part is figuring out how to operate your ink bird and that also has a very small learning curve as well. So if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please put them down below and I will get to them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.